so I came across this book recently, um, and it was just a stumble, right? I, um, one of the things I do, I make a habit of uh, watching YouTube videos on my TV every night, and it's just random videos. Um, my, my, my homepage on my YouTube channel uh, that I watch these videos on is always augmenting me to new things that, you know, artificial intelligence or any other um, brand new trendy thing in technology is, right? And along that, I'll watch a comedy here and there um, just, just to break up that cycle. But I come across this video. Uh, I forget the, the title of that video right now. However, it was talking about this book, Thinking in Systems. Thinking in Systems is by Danella H. Meadows. And it was written and edited, uh, it was rewritten and edited by Diana Wright. Now, what's interesting about Thinking in Systems is that I have always, without knowing and sometimes knowing, thought in systems. Right? And one of my earliest uh, memories or one of my earliest times that I can remember doing something based on thinking, you know, this idea of thinking in systems is my very first job as a dishwasher was uh, back in Pittsburgh and um, it was at a busy restaurant, very busy restaurant, and it was busiest on uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? You get the, the Friday bar rush. All that stuff so very busy and that was my first job as a dishwasher at that busy restaurant so what happened was it was an expectation that when it's so busy every um, evening right during the dinner rush the managers would come out you know tuck their shirt uh, the tie in you know inside their shirt and they help out in the dish room it's a hustle everybody's helping in the dish room because that became the bottleneck. Now, when I started, I looked at that. You know, first week, we, you know, we're being yelled at by the cooks. Dish wrong, come get those dishes, whatever. Um, and we're getting a rush of dishes from the dining. Uh, so it was just chaotic and crazy. And there was no breaks. You couldn't take a break. You start. It's eight hours of just insanity. I did that for a week, and then I did that for the following week. Um, and then I realized that we're, you know, the reason we're stopping, the reason we're being backed up, the reason, uh, you know, the kitchen, the, the, the dish room is, is, is a bottleneck for the whole system is that we have to stop and clean that dishwasher machine, right? We have to stop and we have to thoroughly clean it. It's plugged up, it's clogged, all that stuff with all the dirt, and the dish room is dirty. So that stoppage was easily about 30, 40, you know, 45 minutes. And we, we did that about three times a night. So that did not help. It was just a huge bottleneck. So what I did then is I sort of reversed engineered what the heck was going on with the, with, with the dish room and the dishwasher. I realized that one of the biggest things we had to clean on the dish machine was a filter that was clogging, right? And it was clogging because of gunk and dirt that's coming from the dishes, right? And once it clogs, you can't run any dishes through that dirt water because the dishes are just, are just going to be dirty on the other side, right? So you had to stop and clean it. It was being clogged by, by that gunk coming into the, di the, the dish machine. Where was it coming from? It was coming from the dishes, from the rack, right? So when dishes are being put on the rack, they have all that dirt and gunk. Why was that the case? Because we didn't bother to pre-rinse the, the, the dishes off, right, before they went into 
uh, the machine. We expected the machine to just do wonders and do magic. So uh, just that simple realization <clears throat> allowed me to, every time we get, a, we get that dish rash, pause, you know, align the racks properly, stack the dishes like by like, and pre-rinse those dishes nicely, right? And then you send them through the machine. What happened? Almost overnight, we never once stopped to clean that dish machine during my shift because that water through that filter remained clean and it's self-cleaning when you allow it to just take in a moderate amount of dirt and, you know, and, and it washes and, and, and sanitizes and does all that stuff comes out sparkling on the other side and you can see the sparkle you can see the difference right? so it was just that simple realization that told me especially now in hindsight is that I've always looked at things in parts in systems right? that dish machine is a system and it was being derailed by one part of the system right so just that simple reverse engineering isolation of what goes into that whole process there is input you know process and then output on the other side in the process there is something that's happening there that's being stopped or derailed and therefore it derails the whole system so um that's just my thought of the day um based on this book thinking in systems. I know, you can't really see it properly because it's inverted. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just thought I'd share that. Bye.